Hey guys, it's Dungeon Dungeon from Imagination. I'm here with Andrew. And we're playing Starlock on the Rival Sector one on one game. This is a versus mode. It wasn't never shown anywhere how the gameplay looks. This is the premiere. There's some timestamps on the video, so if you want to skip the draft phase, you can immediately click to the gameplay and you'll be right in the heat with us. So join in. And have fun. Welcome to the thrilling showdown in the Rivals Sector. I'm Kelly the Flesh Terror, commentator from the Savage Mothers. I'm Ungear Forgemaker, representing the Orhound Rebels. Let the race to fix the ship and secure our destiny begin. And we're off! The draft phase begins, and we already see both teams digging deep into their strengths. The Orhound Rebels kick things off with Jet Boots. The Rebels know that Jet Boots gives us the advantage in quick movement across the map. The Mothers respond with pushers, allowing us to reposition any resources on the map. This will definitely bring the advantage to our side. The Rebels are pulling out Saboteur next. Sabotage will let us disable one of your key machines before you can even react. We follow up with Medic Drone. Interesting. The Rebels are upping the ante with Combat Drones. These drones will provide additional firepower. I hope your Medic Drone is ready to work overtime. <laughs> You'll need more than combat drones to stop us. The mothers secure their survival with water cash, the most essential resource in this desert wasteland. But let's see how well you can keep your allies alive when the rebels deploy stranglers. They'll choke your helper out before they even get a sip of water. But your stranglers will be wasting their time when the mothers activate personal teleporter. Do the damage and blink out. Impressive, but it won't be enough. Rebels respond with Destro Bots. Destro Bots are just the tool for the job. We draft Headhunter, one of our most fearsome cards. You know the power of the Savage Mothers lies in our helper units, and with Headhunter, we'll have plenty of help coming all the time. We go for Hitman. He's going to be a nightmare for your leader units. The Mothers secure the backbone of their operations with Bodyguard. Our key unit will be protected from the dangers of the nighttime on Starlock. The Rebels choose Scrap Pile. As always, we know how to make the most out of what others see as useless junk. We pick Engineer, giving us a massive edge in fixing those ship modules and machines. Better keep up, Ungear. Don't worry, Kelly. The Rebels know how to adapt. Let's see who'll fix their ship and fly to freedom, or who's getting buried in the sands of the rival sector. The Savage Mothers are leading with speed and aggression, drafting Runner, Thief and Brute. Our Runner will dominate the map. The Thief will steal vital resources from right under your nose, and the Brute will crush anything in its path. The perfect trio for complete control. We're locking in Runner, Collector and Brute. Our runner matches yours in speed, but we've got the collector for resource efficiency, and with our brute holding the line, we'll outlast you in the long game. Looks like the Rebels got a lucky break with that initiative roll on gear, rolling a five to the mother's four. Luck had nothing to do with it, Kelly. Our runner sprints out of the base, grabbing a single water resource right off the bat. We've also snatched up two holophyte crystals. These crystals are crucial for repairing ship modules, and the rebels are already ahead in securing what we need to make real progress. And the savage mothers are making their move. Our runner darts out, snatching two water resources and securing the market central hex, prime territory for playing helper cards. For just one water, we deploy Headhunter and immediately use its ability to pull the Assassin card into our hand. But we're not stopping there. We drop the water cache, adding two more water resources to our cargo hold. And just to push it even further, we discard the Engineer to add one more water, bringing our total to seven water resources. With all that in hand, we're hiring the Collector, bringing our total unit count to four. It's an aggressive, resource-heavy first move, but the Savage Mothers are built for early dominance. We're well ahead, Ungear. Smart move by the Savage Mothers, using pushers to bring those two holothite crystals right into their runner's position, securing key resources early on. The Rebel's Brute is making big moves now, playing Scrap Pile to add three scrap to our cargo hold, then equipping Jet Boots for that extra mobility. 
With the boost, he charges straight to the market hex and lands a brutal strike on the Savage Mother's runner, inflicting two damage with ease. And here comes the Savage Mother's Thief, sliding into position next to the Rebel's Brute. With a quick and sneaky move, the Thief swipes one water resource right out of the Brute's backpack. A perfect theft to keep the pressure on. The Rebels are capitalising on their market position. Collector exchanges a water resource for one scrap and deploys the Combat Drone which immediately opens fire on the Savage Mother's runner, dealing a crucial point of damage. With the runner now heavily injured at just four hit points, it drops its crystals. The Brute picks up the fallen crystals, making it a solid turn for the Rebels. Meanwhile, the Collector moves to the Sector's edge and grabs a single water resource, bolstering our supplies. The Savage Mother's Brute is stepping up to the game, discarding the Assassin card to add a water resource to our hold, then exchanging that for scrap to build a Medic Drone. The Medic Drone takes flight and gives the runner a much needed boost, healing it up to six hit points. With the Brute advancing toward the center of the map, the stage is set for some serious action. As day one comes to a close, the board is set and both teams are gearing up for a heated contest. Noon phase begins, the Rebel's Brute takes decisive action. We deploy the Saboteur for two water, setting up for some strategic disruption. The Brute then delivers a solid two points of damage to the Savage Mother's runner, pushing it closer to critical status. Moving back toward the base, the Brute collects two scrap resources on the way, a solid turn for the Rebels as we gear up for the next phase. And here comes the Savage Mother's with a power move. Our Brute grabs two scrap and charges straight at the Rebel's runner, delivering a solid two points of damage. The runner barely hangs on, but manages to make a quick escape back to the base, dropping off two crystals and a water resource. That's a strategic retreat. Not so fast, Kelly. We've just built our first module, the Techsmith's Forge. Your runner might be on the ropes, but the Rebel's runner just used the opportunity to heal up to full health. For one water, you can restore three points of damage while in the base. The Savage Mother's Thief is back in action, moving up to the Brute and swiping one of its precious crystals right from its backpack. Stealing from the Rebels is always sweet. Keep an eye on your loot, Ungear. The Rebels Collector is making moves with purpose. First, it heads to the gear shop and picks up a combat knife, a nice addition for any skirmish, then it wraps up the turn by moving to the scrapyard, where it gathers two more scrap resources. We're building up resources and gearing up for whatever the Savage Mothers throw at us next. The Savage Mothers Collector kicks off with a strategic move, heading towards a critical mine and using its ability to snag a precious crystal from an adjacent hex. With the Rebels units all tapped out, the runner takes advantage of the situation. It uses a discovery action to draw a card, pulling the Gravity Vortex Generator. Gravity Vortex Generator gets used immediately to reposition all our units to the central hex. The Brute loads up all the resources into its backpack for safekeeping, ensuring we're not leaving anything behind. Finally, the runner uses its last action point to head towards the base for a much needed heal. Looks like the mothers are executing their plan perfectly. How's that for a power play, Ungear? We still have some tricks up our sleeves, Kelly. As day one transitions to the evening phase, the Rebels' Brute heads back to the base, dropping off the collected resources. With the base secured, the Brute then ventures out into the harsh desert, ready to continue the fight and explore new opportunities. Day two is shaping up to be intense. The Savage Mother's Brute is making strategic moves in the evening phase. First, it exchanges two scrap from its backpack for one water, and then hires the bodyguard for two water. With the extra protection from the knight in play, the brute heads over to the shop, getting closer to the rebel's collector. We're closing in and ready to make some decisive moves. Watch out, Ungear. Thanks to the Techsmith's Forge module, every machine costs one scrap less. We immediately build the Stranglers, and they sacrifice themselves to take out the Savage Mother's headhunter. With that threat neutralized, the Destro bots make their entrance and promptly deal with the Medic Drone. 
The runner then makes a strategic move, positioning itself on the crystal mine hex, setting up for a promising start to day two. The Savage Mother's Collector returns to base, dropping off a crystal and immediately building the water purifier module. This upgrade is a game changer. It will provide us with a single water resource at the start of each dawn phase and comes with additional bonuses to keep us ahead. The Rebels Collector makes a bold move, heading straight for the Savage Mother's Brute and landing a solid stab for two points of damage. It's a fierce showdown. The Savage Mother's Thief steps into the fray, moving to the intense brawl between the Brute and the Collector. With a quick decision, the Thief purchases a knife for herself, ready to join the fight and turn the tide. It's going to be a thrilling day too. Both sides are gearing up and ready for action. The Savage Mother's Runner takes a cautious move toward the base and uses the Discovery action to draw the Artificial Consciousness card. As day one wraps up, we're heading into the night phase, where the real surprises and challenges begin. Let's see what the night has in store for us. And the Sandstorm card makes its dramatic entrance. It's a wild night for everyone. The Savage Mother's Runner and Thief both endure a rough night each suffering two points of damage as they battle the storm and flying debris. It's a harsh reminder of the dangers lurking outside the base. Meanwhile, the rebels come through relatively unscathed, with the storm being quite forgiving for them. It's a tough break for the mothers, but we're not down for the count yet. The game is still in full swing. As day two kicks off, we're checking the victory standings to determine initiative. The tally shows the rebels with four crystals in possession while the Savage Mothers have one fully operational module, equating to three crystals. With that, the Savage Mothers take the initiative for Day 2. As Day 2's dawn phase begins, let's remember how looting works. Resource-producing hexes generate resources, and units on those hexes can auto-loot them right away. If multiple units are present, the unit posing the bigger threat gets the loot, according to the threat table in the rulebook. Thanks to this, the Rebel's Runner has already filled its backpack with two crystals before the day even started. The Savage Mothers kick off day two with a bang. Our thief takes a swing at the Rebel's Collector, landing a heavy blow and seriously injuring him. Not stopping there, the thief grabs all of his resources. You savages! The Collector makes a smart move, avoiding the heat and heading to the Market Hex. Even though he can't load up his backpack right now due to his injury, he still manages to snag a crystal resource and trades it for two water. That water is delivered straight to our cargo hold. With that water, the Rebels Collector takes the opportunity to hire the Hitman. It's a strategic addition to our roster, bringing more firepower at night to our team. The Savage Mother's Collector is on the move, gathering two water resources and reaching out to secure a single crystal from the adjacent hex. It's a solid play, ensuring we're stocking up on crucial resources and keeping the pressure on the Rebels. Every resource counts. The Rebels Runner makes a strategic dash, grabbing a single water resource along the way and heading back to the base to drop off the goods. The Savage Mother's Runner kicks things off with a discovery action, drawing the Arms Dealer card always a valuable asset. The runner then heads back to the base and using just one water, heals up three points of damage. It's a smart move to get back into fighting shape and ensure we're ready for whatever comes next. The Rebel's Brute kicks off with a tactical move by repairing the medical module and using it to heal the Collector back to full health. With the Collector in prime condition, the Brute charges forward and lands a solid blow on the Savage Mother's Collector, dealing two points of damage. The Savage Mother's Brute takes decisive action, first grabbing one water resource from the Thief for safekeeping. Then it charges at the Rebel's Collector, delivering a powerful blow for two points of damage. On the way, the Brute also picks up some scrap, exchanging one water for one scrap then five scrap for one crystal. It's a strong offensive move that keeps the pressure on the rebels and secures key resources for the mothers. As the noon phase begins, the Savage Mother's Collector makes its way back to the base, dropping off valuable resources. Using two water, the Collector heals both the runner and itself, getting back into fighting shape. It's a smart move to ensure our units are ready and in top condition for the challenges ahead. The mothers are regrouping and preparing to make a strong push as we head into the next phase. 
The Rebels Collector makes a big impact in the noon phase, landing two solid hits on the Savage Mother's Brute. That's a hefty four points of damage dealt, significantly weakening the Brute. The Savage Mother's Brute is making some serious moves. First, it trades a crystal for three scrap, and then plays the Distant Intelligent Collecting Kit card, using it to snag a crystal from the furthest spot on the map. Next, the Brute trades another crystal for three more scrap, discards a machine card for a single scrap, and builds the Personal Teleporter. With the Personal Teleporter in hand, the Brute strikes the Rebel's Collector with a powerful four points of damage, making a significant impact. Finally, the Brute teleports safely back to the base, ready to regroup and prepare for the next phase. The Rebel's Brute steps out and grabs a single crystal. It's a straightforward move, but every crystal counts. The Savage Mother's Runner makes a move, heading out from the base and discovering Jet Boots. It's a valuable find that will add some serious mobility to our roster. Discards a helper card to heal up the Brute for one water, bringing her to six hit points. The Rebel's Runner heads out from the base and uses a discovery action to draw Destro Bots. I see a few machines that will definitely make good targets for those. The Savage Mother's Thief makes a bold move, heading to the centre of the map and confronting the Rebels Collector. As the noon phase wraps up, we transition into the evening phase. It's shaping up to be a high stakes round with plenty of action to come. The Savage Mother's Thief delivers a decisive blow, taking out the Rebels Collector. No. It's a major win for us. Take that on gear, you should have known better than to mess with us. With the Orehound Rebels down to just two units, it's desperation mode. Every unit gets an additional action point. The Brute heads to the Crystal Mine and uses a discovery action, drawing the Saboteur card. It's a critical draw that might just turn the tide. The Savage Mother's Runner draws the Decoy card, adding a clever trick to our arsenal. Then the Runner advances to secure a valuable water resource. The Rebels Runner is on a rampage. Discarding a machine, they build the Destro Bots and use them to smash the Savage Mother's personal teleporter to pieces. That's a major blow to their mobility. The Runner then makes a strategic move and uses a discovery action to draw the construction robot. Then, firing the combat drones at the runner of Savage Mothers. The Rebels are clawing their way back into the game with some powerful plays. The Savage Mothers Collector makes a quick move to snatch the water resource from the runner and then hops back into the base. Meanwhile, the Brute stays put, ensuring safety from the impending night phase. The bodyguard is keeping a close watch over the thief. Meanwhile, the Rebel Saboteur destroys the distant Collector and the Hitman lands a solid two points of damage on our thief. What else does this night have in store for us? An electric storm rolls in. This could be a game changer, potentially decimating the Rebels' forces and leaving the game wide open for the Savage Mothers. What will the dice decide? Let's find out. <laughs> a roll of one. Nothing happens, just some flashy lights in the sky. Now it's payback time. The Rebels are gearing up to hit back hard and turn this game around. With the Savage Mothers holding four crystals and the Rebels amassing a total of 10, the Mothers get to make their move first again. The Savage Mother's Thief takes action, stealing resources from the Rebels even though it can't carry them. The Thief leaves the stolen resources on the Hex and advances towards the base. It's a clever play to disrupt the Rebels' plans while ensuring the resources are still within reach. The Mothers are making strategic moves as Day 3 kicks off. The Rebels' runner dashes to the shop, picking up a knife and a bulletproof vest. Equipped and ready, the runner then charges up to the Savage Mother's runner and lands a solid hit, dealing two points of damage. The Rebels are stepping up their game and pressing hard. The Savage Mother's runner uses a discovery action and draws the Arbiter card. Then it lands a hit on the Rebels runner, dealing one point of damage. The Rebels Brute makes a power move, heading to the market. It discards the Saboteur for one water, exchanges that water for a scrap, and discards a machine for more scrap. Then it builds another combat drone. 
the brute moves towards the runner and delivers a decisive blow, taking her out. <laughs> On the way, the brute also picks up light armor. Revenge is sweet, and the rebels are back in the game with a vengeance. What a comeback! The Savage Mother's collector moves into position and with a single action point, retrieves the knife from the allied thief. Meanwhile, the brute charges at the rebel's runner and lands a solid hit, dealing two points of damage. The mothers are ramping up their efforts and making their presence felt on the battlefield. In the noon phase, the brute continues its relentless assault, dealing a staggering four points of damage to the rebel's runner. The pressure is on, and the savage mothers are pressing their advantage hard as the game intensifies. The rebels use the medical module to heal their runner, giving them a much needed boost. Meanwhile, in a desperate bid, the brute, powered up by desperation mode, lands three powerful punches on the savage mother's brute, dealing a massive six points of damage. The rebels are fighting back with everything they've got. This game is far from over. The Savage Mother's Thief pulls off a slick move, stealing a crystal and heading to the oasis to gather water resources. Things are looking grim for the Savage Mothers. The Rebels runner delivers a brutal double stab, taking out a Savage Mother's Brute. With that threat neutralised, the runner then advances, positioning itself to threaten the remaining Mother's units. The stakes are high and the Rebels are making a strong push. Let's see how the Mothers respond. The Savage Mother's Collector makes a daring run-by, stabbing the Rebel's Brute with a combat knife for two damage. The Collector then heads to the shop to gear up, purchasing light armour to bolster defences. It's a calculated move to strike and fortify, keeping the pressure on the Rebels while preparing for the challenges ahead. As Day 3 evening begins, the Savage Mother's Thief lands a desperate punch on the Rebel's runner, dealing one point of damage. With that final strike, the thief races back to the base, seeking safety and preparing for the night ahead. Discards a helper card and heals up three wounds. The tension mounts as both sides regroup and ready themselves for the next phase. The rebel's brute leaps into action, charging at the Savage Mother's Collector and delivering a devastating blow for six points of damage. It's a massive hit that could shift the momentum. This game is intensifying as the Rebels press their advantage. The Savage Mother's Collector makes a strategic retreat to the base, where it heals up to a formidable nine hit points. The Rebels' runner makes a tactical retreat to the base to regroup and heal up from the battle. It's a smart move to recover and prepare for the challenges ahead as both teams brace for the upcoming night phase. The game continues to be fiercely competitive. As the night begins, the riot card is drawn. The Rebels' brute faces the threat of three additional wounds from the rioting inmates. Let's see how the roll goes. No! The Brute takes a critical hit from the rioters. That's a severe blow and a significant setback for the rebels. The chaos of the night phase is truly taking its toll. As day four begins, everyone draws two new cards and the initiative stays with the Savage Mothers. The stage is set for the next round of strategic maneuvers. Both teams are in desperation mode, giving each model an extra action point. It's anyone's game at this point. The pressure is on and every move counts. The Savage Mothers Collector heads to the market, collecting water and a crystal along the way. With the resources gathered, the Collector hires both the Arbiter and Dune Drivers for a total of two water. It's a smart move to bolster the team's capabilities and prepare for the next phases of the game. The Rebels' Brute embarks on a lengthy journey, gathering a total of four crystals. It's a major haul that could be a game-changer. The Rebels are ramping up their resources and setting the stage for a strong comeback. The Savage Mother's Thief heads to the mines and successfully gathers two crystals. It's a valuable addition to their resources. The Rebels' Runner collects three water resources and heads to the market exchanging them for a crystal. With the crystal in hand, the runner makes a swift return towards the base. 
It's a calculated move to bolster their resources and prepare for the upcoming challenges. As the day four noon phase kicks off, the Savage Mother's Collector heads to the scrapyard and uses a discovery action to draw a machine card. It's a strategic move to gain valuable assets and strengthen their position. The game continues to heat up with every play. The Rebels runner charges at the Savage Mother's Collector and delivers two powerful stabs, inflicting a total of four points of damage. Meanwhile, the thief makes a return to the base, delivering precious crystals. The rebels brute on a long trek to the shop, lands a blow on the collector for two damage and picks up a laser blaster, a deadly weapon that inflicts two damage with a range of one. To top it off, the drones are deployed to fire at the collector, leaving her heavily injured. The rebels are ramping up their offensive and pushing hard for an edge in this fierce battle. Things are looking grim for the Savage Mothers. As the evening phase begins, the Collector strikes back, dealing four damage to the runner and forcing him to drop all their resources. With a powerful move, the Collector then heads to the market, drags a crystal there and exchanges it for three scrap. Using the scrap, she builds a remote Collector, drawing a crystal directly from the map to the cargo hold. This brings the crystal count to three, allowing the rebuilding of the medical module and healing the collector up to eight hit points. The Savage Mothers are making a strong comeback and setting up for a promising finish. The runner makes a dramatic leap onto the collector, delivering two precise stabs for a total of four damage. Things are looking grim for the Savage Mothers team as the rebels press their advantage. The momentum is shifting and the pressure is on. The thief steps out of the base, desperately searching for a glimmer of hope in this dire situation. She discovers a Destro Bots card. And discards two machines for two scrap to build Destro Bots. The newly deployed Destro Bots then go on to destroy the jet boots of the Rebels' Brute. It's a bold move to shake things up and try to turn the tide. The Rebels' Brute charges towards the Collector. With just one hit, the Collector stands at a precarious two hit points. It's a close call. As the night phase begins, the hitman finishes the job for the rebels, executing the collector. With one of the Savage Mother's key players out of the game, the rebels are tightening their grip. To add insult to injury, the saboteur deactivates the DICK from Savage Mother's control. The night card is drawn and it's a neutral one, scrap delivery. This card brings a fresh influx of scrap resources to the field. Day five begins with the initiative in the hands of the Savage Mothers. With only one member left from their once formidable team, the thief is now a lone maverick. She starts off with the last man standing rule that grants her two additional action points. Boldly makes her move to head to the shop, stealing resources from the rebels and by light armor. Then she employs the gravity vortex generator to drag the rebels away creating some much needed space. The last stand has begun and every move will be critical. The Rebel's Brute makes a calculated move, inching forward before launching a shockwave missile. It pulls the thief right into the range of the deadly laser blaster. With a powerful shot, the Brute fires, delivering a crushing four points of damage. The Savage Mother's last hope is hanging by a thread. The Rebel's Runner rushes in, delivering two quick stabs to the Thief. This isn't just bad, this is a disaster for the Savage Mothers. How much more can that lone Thief take? Our Thief, the last hope of the Savage Mothers, is healed by the medical module, up and back on her feet. Scrambling to gather precious resources and stacks up five scrap. But without a builder in base, that personal teleporter is nothing more than a distant dream. She's all alone, cornered, clutching those crystals like they're her last lifeline, because they are. The Rebels' drones let out their final shot, then it's back to the scrap heap for them.
All that firepower fuels a new build, navigation systems. And just like that, the consolidation starts. The brute, relentless, tracks down the thief, leaving her clinging to life with just a single hit point. But it's the runner who delivers the killing blow, cutting off any hope for the savage mothers. That's it, the thief is down and with her, the mothers fall. Starlock belongs to the rebels tonight. <laughs>